Show you are down with the pod squad. Rep the podness by going to teespring.com backslash stores backslash podness dash closet dash one to get all of our newest merch. And as always, follow our entire movement at thepodness.com. Welcome to the podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? It's your boy, one third of the partners, Tiz, coming back with you with another episode of Tiz Takes, the quick hit edition. Um, these I'm going to be dropping throughout the week as things arise, just to touch on different news in the battle rap culture and just give my perspective on it. Also, to just kind of guide you to some really good content that other creators are putting out. So for today, um, my first topic that I wanted to touch on was I was watching Misfits, um, My Dumb Advice podcast and she had Cortez on and they were talking about media and how they represent Battler's music and how there's a lack of promotion um, in Battler's music and I had some opinions on it so here's some of my takes Tiz take number one um, I think that Cortez made a really decent point about having media not be as supportive of battle rappers music as they could be um, I do see certain media, though, promoing a lot of music from battlers. Um, people like Vodafly, Piper Boy. I see Jay Black doing it. Um, I've seen Henny Man do this, where they really represent and promote and talk about the battlers' music that they're listening to, um, which leads me to take two. What artists may not want to hear is that some battlers' music is not necessarily appealing to the mass audience. Um, battle rappers are some of the highest level lyricists we have in the art or genre of rap. And sometimes that style may not translate to musicality or being appealing to the mass audience who's listening to the music. Um, so as a media person, they may not represent or support certain battlers music because that music may not be appealing to the audience they cater to or just to a mass audience in general. Um, now that I'm an artist now and I'm making and creating content and coming up with ideas, um, one of the main things that I know I have to remember is that stuff that I put out may not resonate with everybody. I may never have a hundred people that follow me and agree with me and that are into what I'm into. I realize that my perspective is mine and artists need to remember that too. Um, I think it's important for them to be, and battle rappers to be self-aware that when they're making their music and it's not being promoted by others, then it's one of two things that can happen. Either the artist can go ahead and promo the music themselves, like Matt and Cortez do on their own shows. Um, I've seen them do like listening parties and like break their own music on their shows. Or look back at your work and see if it's a reason that people don't want to promote it. It may not be as great as you or the people around you who think like you believe it is. Um, yeah, so just be self-aware and realize that maybe something isn't resonating with the audience and that's why the battle media isn't picking it up and then adjust your, your work accordingly. Or like I said, stand on what you made. Don't worry about everybody else promoting it and just do it yourself. Um, like I said, I've seen Matthew Cortez, Cortez do this. I've seen Sway Seva and Team Hami do this with their videos. So just, your, you are your best fan. Promo yourself if the, if the world isn't with it. Um, Nate's take, Tiz's take. I do think that media has a responsibility to be professional in their approach to critiquing Ballard's music. Um, I've seen, you know, some people or bloggers where instead of just saying, hey, this, this album didn't speak to me or, you know, um, maybe this, the music that this particular person put out didn't speak to me, but hey, there may be an artist for it. I've seen people just call it trash. And that's a very blanket statement and personal statement as opposed to critiquing the technique of the music or saying, hey, I didn't like the way they put the words together. You just calling it trash takes it out of your opinion and now it's putting a stamp on it. And as media, we do have influence on what others who think like us are kind of gonna be geared toward trying. So when we call something trash, it may shut someone in our audience up. Um, it may shut them completely off to even being open to listening to the music and giving it a chance. So I think that media does have a strong responsibility in keeping the personal bias and the feelings out of it and not using words and terms that can come across as I am blankly dismissing or degrading this person's talent, as opposed to saying, hey, I just don't like it. Jay-Z is my favorite rapper. And there's been, uh, 
music that he's put out. Um, he put out that Kingdom Come album. It didn't speak to me. However, I'm not going to call it trash or say it's horrible. It's just it wasn't for me. Um, there's millions of people who love Beyonce's music. Her music doesn't speak to me, but I recognize there's a talent. So there's a way that you can recognize that or re relay that, hey, this doesn't fit me. This isn't what I necessarily want to hear. But that doesn't necessarily make it trash. Um, and I just want to make sure we, as media, get out of that thing of like calling stuff trash or like putting our personal opinions on something. Speak to the technique of it. Talk about the actual art itself, but don't like do stuff that can degrade somebody or just can turn somebody completely off to even trying something. Um, so to recap uh, my thoughts and takes on my, the, my Dumb Advice episode, um, first of all, artists need to be self-aware and know that they don't make greatness 100% of the time. Battlers should recognize the media that do promote their work when it is good. And the media has to be more responsible in how they present critiques and feedback so that they don't add unnecessary, ne unnecessary negativity to an already negative light on Dallas music. There is a stigma on Dallas music um, that's kind of been around for a while in the industry. And as media in battle rap culture, if this is the culture we love and we want to see our artists that we have, our fans of and that we support win, we got to get out of the habit of like calling their stuff trash. Um, just doesn't work or we got to make sure that even if we don't support one artist because they may not speak to us to support the music artists in battle rap that you do appreciate just to make sure that those battles are getting that light and they get a fair shake out here in a very biased industry um so really great conversation by cortez and misfit i think they share some really good light from an artist perspective on this issue um and please subscribe to misfit's channel check out her My Dumb Advice show because she does a great job of broaching these culture conversations in a very intelligent and respectful way. And she does it every week. So shout out to her. Please make sure if you get a chance, you go check out the interview with her and Cortez, My Dumb Advice. Now, the next thing that I wanted to touch on, that I wanted to give a tears take on this, this fine Sunday morning is the Norbs Untold Truth that Chris Unbiased dropped last night. When I tell you, this interview shook the culture. It truly shook the culture, man. Um, you see my boy Norv behind me here. Um, Norv was dropping some jewels yesterday. Um, first off, first to his tape. Definitely, definitely Norv shed a lot of light on a lot of the accusations that battlers have levied against the URL and that other league owners have levied against the URL. I think he did a real good job of kind of giving the backstory on the contract issues that come up, um, some of the ways that URL have looked and perceived other battle companies. And he did a good job of just explaining himself and presenting his position in a very respectable way. Um, I like the fact that when he did it, it didn't he didn't seem like he was doing it to be malicious. It seemed like he was genuinely doing it to just give his perspective, which I can respect. Um, and I'm not sure what the whole truth is, but like I said, Norv presented and explained himself very well without going the unnecessary step of throwing URL under the bus. So shout out um, to Chris for really asking the great questions that we all wanted to know and that we had after the lawsuit started. Um, and for Norv's just kind of shedding more light on where he was at mentally when the issue with him at twerk happened. Um, I think it was very self-reflective, but also just a really good piece of content. Um, Chris Unbiased did an excellent job yet again. And if you have not checked this um, one out, please go do it. Um, when Norv started listing, how many people he brought in and what his true role was behind the scenes all this time, um, it was a true revelation for me personally. Um, I knew who Norris was. I knew he was in charge of the PGs. I knew he was responsible for scouting, but I didn't know the lengths and the depths to which he had actually brought so many of my favorite battle rappers into the culture. And um, he really was a cornerstone of the URL, regardless of what people thought about him personally or whatever else. He did a good job of laying out his case that he was a essential piece to URL getting to where they are now. And yeah. That list was epic. It's literally almost every famous battle rapper right now that you love. He had a hand in bringing them there. 
And then the fact that uh, Chris threw in the receipts of the different artists videos saying that, yeah, Norbs was the one that brought me in. I thought that was really powerful. Um, next take. I hope this untold truth leads to the Debo untold truth next. Um, he disagreed with a lot of the facts that Norb stated. Him and Nunu Nails um, were kind of on Twitter going through their rebuttals to some of the points that Norb's made. Um, I would love to see that Debo untold truth. Um, I know that he has been involved in a lot of many aspects of battle rap over the years. And just to see his background knowledge, you can tell he has a lot that he wants to say. And I'd love to hear him say it in a format such as untold truth. So Chris, I'm biased. You got work to do, champ. Uh, secondly, or thirdly, I should say, I hope the URL leadership puts out their version. Um, I'd love to see their side. Um, I'm not a fan of one side of the situation, so I'd love to see both perspectives and be able to kind of, as a fan and as a third party, be able to put them both together and kind of figure out where that truth in the middle may be. Because even though Norris laid his position out really well, URL has been pretty quiet on where they stand and what the true, what their true motivations were behind the scenes. So I'd love to see their untold truth as well. Um, I do think that this is going to have a ripple effect throughout the culture, and we're going to be seeing the effects of this untold truth for the next few weeks, maybe even months. Um, but the most thing, the thing I'm most excited about, I should say, is the plethora of bars that we're going to see about this situation, the different angles and flips people are going to use in their battles. And as always, you know, this is battle rap, so everything needs to go back to what is it going to, how is it going to impact the battle? And I think it's going to be a lot of very cool and creative bars that are brought up around this and flipping the situation. So if you have not seen the Untold Truth featuring Street Star North, please, please subscribe to Chris Unbiased's YouTube page and see the full interview. Um, he puts out excellent content like this all the time. Welcome back, Chris. It's good to have your perspective back in the community and excellent job on that Untold Truth. Um, so that's all I have for y'all today. Please make sure you go subscribe to Misfits channel for the My Dumb Advice. Um, it's an excellent podcast. She does a great job and her production value is impeccable. Um, same with Chris Unbiased. He does excellent blogs, content, back behind the scenes stuff. And he's really good at recapping um, battles without getting personal. So two places that you need to go, check out Chris Unbiased, check out Misfits YouTube page. Um, here, under here, please comment down below what you thought of these convos and the Norbs interview. I want to keep the conversation going um, and just see what you guys thought and what your opinions were. Um, also, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so we can get more content and so we can start to show up in people's algorithm. The partners, we are new. We are new to this. So if you got feedback on how we can up our production value, if you have skills or tips that we are not doing or implementing yet that can make us better, please continue to give that feedback. We are a growing channel and we just want to get our perspectives out in a way that can resonate with those that have similar or like minds to us. So, man, so please be blessed. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, until the next time, I'm one third of the partners. I'm Tiz, and this has been my take. Peace out, Pod Squad. Thank y'all for joining. Have a conversation. The partners are here. Welcome Join our Patreon so that you can see video episodes of our weekly podcast and find out how things like this happen. Yo, it's your boy Pat. Up here, damn, I'm messing up. <laughs> got spit coming. I ain't gonna never get this in so right. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz.